Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, so my name is uh, David Barbara. Uh, I'm I work for Avast, and uh, I was supposed to have a presentation here about Android TV, as you might see in uh, agenda. And uh, there was actually really really great talk about Android TV yesterday from Damien, and uh, I saw that like 50% of his talk is already covered uh, in in my talk. So I decided to switch the topic completely and talk about something uh, completely uh, different. So I will talk about uh, DOS and App Standby in Android M. Uh, it's an area I've been researching uh, lately because uh, it greatly affects our apps at Avast. And uh, I think it's very important to know about this uh, change in Android M. It can affect uh, many of your apps which are doing some, something on the background. So let's start. So why uh, DOS and App Standby? Uh, uh, what's the motivation behind it? It's this. So battery life is now basically like the basic human need. <laughs> it's even more basic than Wi-Fi. So that's why uh, Google is investing uh, time into battery optimizations for Android. So. The uh, whole purpose of DOS and App Standby is to save battery. So now I will explain what the DOS mode is uh, exactly. So DOS mode uh, is, uh, is triggered when, when the device is not charging, when the device is stationary, is lying somewhere, and when the screen is off. So when these conditions are met, also there is some timeout, so after half an hour or something of these conditions, the dose mode kicks in and it restricts uh, all background uh, processes. Uh, so this is uh, how it looks uh, when apps are synchronizing. Usually they are synchronizing like all the time. And when the dose kicks in, uh, it, it will disallow synchronization and background work, and the window is getting longer and, and, and longer. Uh, the device wakes from the dose mode periodically for like five minutes, uh, so apps can do some synchronization, but then uh, it stops everything again and device uh, is really battery efficient. So that's dose mode, and app standby uh, is kind of uh, similar because it's uh, it's a dose mode but uh, per app dose mode. So dose mode is for the whole device, and app standby is like dose mode per one app. So the Android automatically detects inactive apps which are not used, and it applies like this app specific dose mode to them. So app standby app is in standby mode when. The user recently haven't used any activities, haven't uh, interacted with the UI of the app, uh, and there are no notifications from the app, and the device is not charging. So when these conditions are met, the app standby kicks in, and like your app is uh, like almost disabled for all background processing. Uh, it's important it's not charging, because when you plug your device into charger, uh, up standby is lifted and uh, you can do all your background work again. And uh, if the device is not charged in 24 hours, there is a brief window for even the up standby apps, like once a day, usually at night, when the apps can do some synchronization. You can also disable, user can disable up standby uh, so you can go to settings and disable app standby. There is also intent. So for some apps, uh, you might ask users to uh, to like they call it ignore battery optimizations. It's it should be used as last resort, but it's uh, it's a possibility. So there is an intent. It looks like this, and this affects only app standby. It doesn't affect those mode. So when some app is in. Uh, uh, like the white disk here, the dose mode will still affect it. Now, how you can test it on Android M? 
So there are some ATP commands. You can find this in documentation. First, you need to like simulate uh, unplugging the battery, and then you can go to the dose mode here. And this is for the up standby. You can make some up like inactive. You can uh, vary if it's active or not. So you can test the behavior. And we have Avast have been testing this quite a lot to see what the behavior is because it's not very well documented. And uh, I will share with you uh, what we found. So recently, there has been a post on Android developers about like how to do background scheduling on Android. And it's pretty complex. So uh, if you are doing some work which like every 60 seconds or less, they recommend to use handler. So no alarms, anything. This is most efficient. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want some conditions, for example, schedule it only when the device has a network or when the device is uh, charging. You should use this uh, new API, GCM Network Manager, which is a pretty bad name actually. I would rename it to Job Scheduler Compa because it's a job scheduler which works uh, across uh, most of Android versions from Gingerbread, I think. So you can you can use this. It's pretty nice new API. And also there is uh, of course uh, alarm, ma alarm manager which was here uh, from the beginning of Android. So this is all alarm manager and the API is uh, uh, kind of uh, big. So there is a lot of options how to set up alarm manager. I will not go into the detail. And there is also sync manager. So if you have account in your in your phone, you can use sync manager to synchronize. Uh, periodically. And now, dose mode, most of these just doesn't work. So, alarm manager doesn't work at all. These two methods, like according to documentation, should work. It's written in the documentation that this should work, but it doesn't work on the Android M preview. So, somebody reported this as a bug in the issue tracker and the Googlers said like it works as intended. So maybe it will not work. <laughs> uh, also, uh, the job scheduler is not scheduled uh, in the dose mode. Uh, only thing which can wake the device from dose mode is this set alarm clock method. And this is uh, intended for if you are really alarm clock, like user visible alarm clock. So if you use this method, it will display some icon in the UI that like alarm clock is scheduled. So this, this should be used only for alarm clocks, not for your data syncing. Because it's user visible. And you can still maybe do some hacks or like use the handler and like keep the service running all the time. But you will lose wake clocks, you will lose any connectivity, you will lose internet, even like scanning Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you will lose all of that even if you somehow manage to launch your service. <laughs> so that's pretty scary. And uh, here are some more details we found during our testing and what I found online. So uh, you can detect uh, whether the device is in the dose using this method, that can be handy. You can also detect uh, if your app is whitelisted for up standby using this. Uh, one interesting thing, if you schedule alarms, uh, they are triggered when the dose mode ends or top scheduler. But if you schedule like more alarms, they are all triggered. So they'll be triggered like four times. If you trigger four alarms in the night, for example, they'll be triggered all. So you should handle this in your code so it like doesn't synchronize it four times but just once. Also, an uh, interesting thing is that the dose and up standby doesn't work on devices which don't have Google Play services. So some Chinese devices uh, or maybe Amazon, Amazon phones, so they will not have dose and up standby. Because uh, it's uh, tied with uh, GCM. Uh, I will talk about it later. But uh, there is an uh, option to Make the device using GCM, and like those devices doesn't have GCM, so the dose and up standby is not there. 
So we have been testing uh, like uh, the exact times in the latest preview. Like this could change with the final release, but right now the dose window for synchronization uh, is about five minutes, and the period is uh, first is one hour, then two hours, then four hours, then six hours, and then it's usually six hours, six hours, six hours. Uh, we are not sure. We haven't tested that one. So uh, we also uh, use content providers to communicate between our apps, and uh, they still work if. Uh, if, the, if, the, if it's in the dose mode, so it's good. Uh, one interesting thought, if you want to schedule something for the morning, like to prepare some data, data in the night, and so they are ready when the user wakes up. Uh, actually, when there is the alarm clock, which uh, wakes the device from the dose mode, so uh, the device is actually woken up a little bit earlier, like five minutes earlier. So the apps have time to synchronize before the user is woken. But awoken. But this assumes that the user uses the phone for waking him. So like maybe somebody doesn't use his phone for waking him and then uh, one more. So we also tried that like if you have music playback, uh, the dose will not kick in. But that's not for, we thought that like all foreground services will stop those, but that's not the case. It's just music. I don't know, it's just some exception. Maybe there is more, but we just see this with music. So you might, you might think now, but wait, that can break, uh, break my app, right? So uh, I think yes, it can uh, limit functionality of some apps. And then you need to explain to the users like why it's not syncing in the night or doing what it should have done. And uh, I have some use cases for uh, some apps which can be affected and possible solutions how the developers uh, can deal with it. So first, I think this category will be affected most is instant messengers. So. Uh, as you cannot have any network connection during those mode, uh, instant messengers can't listen to incoming messages. So the use case is this, you want to receive message. And the solution is a high priority GCM message. So all instant messengers now need to support GCM, like not all of them do, like they have some custom solutions. It's pretty big change, but I guess it will save the battery if there is just one connection to the server. And uh, there should be uh, some special uh, GCM message, like high priority, which can wake the device. So like normal GCM message doesn't wake uh, the device, but the high priority does. And I think it's not released yet, like you cannot test it now. But it should be soon, because uh, Android M is coming, right? Uh, also, uh, apps like SMS Manager, right? Like you want to receive the SMS immediate, immediately, even if the device is in the dose mode. So hopefully, uh, uh, some broadcasts like uh, receiving SMS uh, still works. Not all broadcasts work, but like this important uh, stuff like uh, receiving SMS still can wake the app from dose mode. Uh, I have a friend who is working on Sleep as Android. It's a popular app for sleep tracking. So he is also affected quite a lot with the dose mode. Because he's using uh, accelerometer and microphone to monitor user sleep at night. And at night usually the device is uh, in the dose if, uh, if the device is not connected to the charger. So uh, how to solve it? Well, it's actually maybe a good idea to ask user to plug it into the charger because uh, the sleep as Android takes some battery, so it's a good idea that it will be charged in the morning and then the dose mode is not there. And uh, we, I've been discussing this with uh, Google DevRel and he, he said there might be some new permission in like the final Android M specifically for these type of apps which are doing something with the sensors. So it's kind of a rumor, but the Google Devrel said it, so hopefully there will be. 
Another use case, uh, this is actually our stuff, like uh, our backup what we have. So uh, another use case, like periodic backup, you want uh, like your photos to be backed up periodically every day. Uh, so uh, this uh, this can also stop working. And what I recommend is using this GCM network manager and uh, set the conditions uh, only when the device has network and uh, when it's charging, because uh, photos can be large, so and they doesn't have to be synced uh, uh, really precisely every day. It's it's okay. So. Maybe it's a good idea to put the charging requirement, and in that case, there is no dose more than up standby, so it will just work. And you should also use foreground service when you're downloading stuff, as usual on Android. But this is important for the up standby because if your your app has uh, uh, ongoing notification or any notification, it will not go to up standby. Also. Uh, my another uh, friend, Android developer, he has this app for downloading podcasts. So the use case is that uh, the app should download some app, uh, some podcasts which are subscribed by the user at night. So when the user drives uh, in the morning to work with like without data, he should be able to listen the podcasts offline. So how to solve this? Uh, actually, uh, here you don't want to set the requirements to charging because, like this, should be downloaded even if uh, the device is not uh, in the charger at night. So use the GCM network manager only with network requirement, and uh, also the for program service for downloading. And but what's important, you should reschedule if it fails. Because if the device wakes in the night from the dose mode, you have just five minutes for downloading the audio. So it might be enough, maybe not. So if, if you can't download it in this five minutes window, it will fail and you should uh, reschedule and download it again in the, in the morning. But the GCM Network Manager uh, can help you with that. It, it can, you can reschedule for another time if it fails. And it will just work. The GCM Network Manager is a really nice API. It even survives like uh, device restarts. So if user uh, restarts the device, the tasks which were scheduled will, uh, uh, will, will per uh, perform again. And uh, final use case, another our Avast app, we have this uh, app anti-theft. So uh, this app is really affected by up standby and dose mode, because uh, this app by definition should be invisible, like the user should not see it. So uh, it's kind of a problem, because if the user doesn't interact with the app, if the user doesn't see it, then it will go to up standby and it cannot protect the user. So uh, in this case, the solution is uh, ask the user to turn off up standby using the intent I showed before. Uh, it should be used as last resort, but for, for this app, I think it makes sense. Also, like OEMs or Google can uh, can whitelist some apps by default. So we have some deals with OEMs, so maybe OEMs can do it for anti theft. And uh, then one, when the, your device is stolen, or user's device is stolen, uh, we should use uh, high priority GCM and maybe also SMS if the device is offline to control the device remotely. So here are some sources uh, I, uh, I used in researching this topic. Look at this post, uh, it's really nice uh, explaining uh, different ways how to do background work and scheduling on Android. And uh, last slide, we are hiring at Avast. Uh, we have a really nice office in Prague, in Czech Republic, and there is a nice relocation package if you want to work from, uh, from Prague for a while. If you are interested, ping me, here's my email. And that's it uh, uh, from those on standby, and I'm sure there'll be some questions. Thank you.
you mentioned that uh, the user has to be asked permission to disable app standby. Is that um, a, a switch, like in the settings, and does that work for application? Or is it an intent that you as a developer want? Yeah, it's a switch in settings. So user can find it in uh, system settings, but you can also use intent to guide the user to that screen. For uh, that function is only for the specific application or for other applications? Sorry, the those mode? Yes, yeah. uh, the mode. Uh, so the standby the, mode, yes. So the standby is per application, the dose mode is for the whole device. So you need to switch off uh, those or uh, standby for the specific application? You can switch off the standby for a specific application, but you cannot control the dose mode. The dose mode happens and you cannot do anything about it. Uh, in that five minute window, do you have the opportunity to uh, use the power edge to uh, turn on the screen and therefore killing those mode, or at least setting uh, the period from six back to one hour? Mm -hmm. Interesting. No, I, uh, we haven't tested this. I know you can acquire by clock in these periods. So maybe. Yeah, it's good hack. <laughs> <Yeah>, try it. <laughs> I heard for the first time the those mode. Do you use also Bluetooth connectivity in those mode? Where apps won't work? Yes, exactly. You lose all connectivity. <laughs>